Hey Soul Tribe, welcome to your Divine Guidance Reading, where we are spiritual as fuck. If we haven't met yet, my name is High Priestess Berry, Psychic Medium and Divine Channeler, hoping to bring you a message. Now, always remember, listen to your instincts, tap into your intuition. If there's anything that I talk about that doesn't make any sense, don't be fine. Do not worry about it. This message may not be for you, but you're always welcome to stick around and enjoy the show. Mmm. I... Whatever it is that someone in the collective is at in the moment, whoever it is that I'm tapped into right now, like, it's sort of, okay, time to take the reins. You've taken a step back. In many ways, a lot of you feel as though you've been going at this alone. A little bit of rebel without a cause will throw in a few black sheeps while we're at it, but there's something about... Managing your mischief, you know, taking care of said business and whatever has been going on, it's giving you a chance to be a little bit more light footed and in like, well, I could, I could say playful communication. This is actually like a wee bit bratty and obstinate. <laughs> got two of swords right here. And it's sort of like, okay, when do I behave like a brat? When do I act obstinate? Like I was joking last week saying like, you know, make snark spiritual again. But there's something about you trying to find that delightful balance on what battles are worth picking with other people. We've got the card of judgment and Many of you have probably felt slightly antagonized as though you're always feeling as though you need to be not quite walking on eggshells, but that definitely I need to prepare for the next assault, whether that means, and I don't actually mean this more in a, a physical assault sort of way. It's more so when's the next burn battle? When's the next thing that I got to prove my worth with? When's the next time I have to confront this energy and... Seven of Swords in the reverse and realize that they're the ones who, I mean, they're the ones that are full of shit. They're the ones who are scared of their own shadow and also realizing that you've been upset about the wrong things. You haven't been making the effort to find out why things bother you personally. You've been dare I say, overly empathic, a little bit too sympathetic to the other side that many of you just forgotten that your feelings actually kind of matter. Ten of Swords in the reverse. And today we're going to be talking about knowing it is okay to walk away, especially if you're dealing with people who are getting really clever with their words, clever with the way they want to verbally shank you when you try to leave the room. People trying to throw you underneath the bus are just not fucking getting it. In some ways, if their inability to truly understand something when I have gone out of my fucking way to explain what it is that's actually going on, that person's lack of understanding no longer is my problem. As though you've been giving a situation plenty of time to <laughs> accept reality, to <laughs> in some ways, like, you know, just deny reality and just recognizing that just needs to be them. It doesn't need to be you. And it shouldn't be enough for you to hold yourself back because I did decide to consult the urban crow. And at the base, I do the card of battle. And I was talking earlier about, you know, like <laughs> epic, like, you know, word battles like this. is, But this is more of that verbal assault energy where you feel as though you've always had to walk on eggshells. And even if you try to stand up for yourself, there's this kind of Mwah! sort of sort of energy because below that I did see mimicry but when I do dove deeper it's sort of as though if I was to come up with a story there's like these old memories and I think if I went yeah there we go it's sort of as though you've been through this cycle before you've grieved something could have been a miscommunication a misunderstanding a parting of ways mutually having to let something go and for this card I'm actually getting more compromise especially after someone got hurt. And it's like an old memory that's been playing over and over again in the back of your mind. I have talked recently about that persistent pain, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, how it is. It is easy for us to live memories that um, are from our past and reliving our past as though it's our present. But 
Speaking of presents, I do have the card of gift and it's the cycle of having the argument, deciding to compromise, in some ways coming up with a contract where both of you have to remember how to both be on your own good behavior and then somehow offering some kind of gift. Like I'm hearing the word potlatch. Um, it's where we get the word potluck from where, you know, tribes come together annually and they share goods and stories and um, e exchange um, once per year. But I'm getting sort of this like you've been giving the person the gifts whether if that is um, apology gifts or renewal gifts or just little like tokens of appreciation, partly because that's what you thought you were supposed to do. Because I got this card of mimicry. They were doing it for you, so you would offer it to them. It's as though you've been trying to follow in step with this, with this other person in order to quell their frustrations with you and realizing that the entire time an argument needed to happen. Well, what's kind of cool is that we do have the card of luck. And I will note there's the card of perspective that also showed up. And I found that really curious because I know there's a reading at least from a week or two ago where battle, preparation, and luck all showed up in the same reading. And this is really giving you all the opportunities you realize that even if you have repeated a cycle all over again, there's something about going through this intentionally and being more thoughtful and fearless in your communication and your intentions that are get it's like you're getting these nuggets of realization sort of as though even though you took a risk you looked up and all of a sudden there was lunch there for you and it's kind of given you enough to start feeling okay about preparing to take brand new steps in your journey because at the sacred symbols oracle we do have the card of meditate but below that spiritual cleanse now I do see these cards a lot off camera, especially when I go to cleanse the energy. And I've always seen these cards together. They've been stuck together for at least a couple of weeks. And it's sort of this leading up until you've known this has been in the undertow. You know that it's time to start purging old spiritual practices, but also toxic energies. And because we have the rosary, like even recently I had an image of like a mother figure sort of holding on to something that contains memories. Like I'm not Catholic, so I don't quite know the tradition of the rosary, but I do also consider it as sort of like, you know, memories. Like when you went through something, when you overcome, when you had overcome, like something to touch, to look at, you're being encouraged right now, whatever meditative tools that you've been using to bring you up until this point, those are your modalities that you know you can trust because they're helping you reflect on the past in a healthy way. They're helping you ground in some new spiritual information. And I'm hearing from many of you, it's developing a better relationship with your guides because we do have Knight of Swords, which was um, this card kept coming up a couple of times during the pre-shuffle off camera. And this is like, no, we got to grab the reins. It's time to take action. It's time to start feeling okay that you have the right idea of what it is that you need for yourself. Because below that, we do have three of pentacles with an inverted temperance. And it's this GTFO maneuver where you've seen enough, you've felt enough, you've fought enough. And it's sort of like, why was I fighting in the first place when I could have everything that I need if I just left? Because we do have the card of the Hermit in the Clarifying deck. And part of what happened with this shuffle is as I was shuffling like a whole hunk of cards, uh, suddenly um, jumped out. And the cards that came out were this Hermit, as well as a Five of Swords. This, If you're going inward, it means that you can just walk away from other people's cutting remarks because we have a three of swords knowing that if someone's going to take their time to I, I mean i know this isn't five of pentacles leave you out in the cold but kind of the way that i'm looking at this card it's sort of like they don't want to play by your rules and you it's this is an absolution energy it's sort of as though okay I have a new way that I would like to operate. I have a new set of rules and they're based on a different level of kindness and compassion. And if someone does not want to get meet me at my level, 
which is good for you. I'm glad that I'm hearing meet at my level as opposed to lowering yourself, hoping they get the hint, recognizing that you are setting a standard, a higher bar, not because you're prejudiced, not because you're privileged, but just because you know your worth and you know that it's actually worth working towards because below that we have another three of pentacles and so this is the mess that other people have created in your life and so you can feel better with this six of swords that it's their mess it was never your job to clean it up in the first place so we're going to go ahead and cut all the decks and ju jump into the reading and we're going to be asking what the fuck do you think could be going on we'll get your perspective what the fuck could actually be going on we'll get um the higher perspective and then um, we'll also ask for a little bit of guidance from spirit. <laughs> oh, man. And then we'll also get um, final potential outcome. Now, um, I don't know how much I'm going to dive into it for this particular reading, but um, Steve's Love Tarot has definitely gone into the whole... Uh, uh, Pluto retrograding back into Capricorn. This is that in and out pendulum energy that I've been casually mentioning. And as of today, like, you know, I just saw 11, 12 on the clock because as of like, I think it's June 11th, we're back into, um, Pluto cap, Pluto retrograde into Capricorn. Now, like, what the fuck does that mean? High level. It, it's, um, the energy where we may while have felt really good about the decision we made. We've been seeing people for who they actually are because um, with this whole Pluto going la, 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 for the last like, you know, six months, it's giving you a chance to see people behave exactly who they are, recognizing that people are just acting the way that they are, seeing people for who they are actually behaving. And it's just sight. Just acknowledging, oh, that's exactly how the person is. And why would I want to fucking change them? But as we're transiting back into this um, Capricorn energy, we're going to be at the risk of losing faith. Maybe I was wrong, but it means that everything is up for review. So it means all the stuff that you've been learning for the last three to six months, they may come back to you, not because spirit's trying to fuck with you. We did see that card of judgment in your pre-shuffle along with a seven of swords. Um, it's more so um, double authenticating what you actually know so that as you go through this next three month period, you're going to be able to recognize who is holding you back because of their supreme jealousy? I got the card of grounded underneath. And this is about really anchoring in all of the lessons, all the shit that you've gone through, all of the physical changes that many of you are making in your reality. The, the inward you is not matching the outward and it's cruel and unkind to have other people submit to what we think is supposed to be good as opposed to manifesting better situations for all of us so that we can give each other space. We can just give each other some time. We can just let other people be themselves. If they want to be non-committal, they can be non-committal. If they want to be fucking children, oh, they're more than welcome to behave like fucking children. Like I was noting like this page of wands. We have officially have three page of wands and we haven't even gotten into the core of your reading. And that comes down to this whole like, what energy am I going to be playful towards? Who am I sharing my ideas with? Where do I stoke my own personal passion? And given that we do now have two page of wands, this one's being fueled by a queen of pentacles. And this is just, I know what I want. If you want to join me, that's great. But there's so much freedom and sassiness that I am picking up from this card because below here with this um, page of wands, we've got a knight of wands underneath. And this is, again, that impulsive fire. In many ways, if we're talking about you trying to bring this shit into your physical reality and your physical considerations, because that's what the queen of pentacles is about. It's like nurturing you in the moment, having a nurturing home, a nurture family life, you know, good food to eat, um, you know, good clothes to, to, to get dressed in. Like, there's something about reinventing your idea of what home life is supposed to be. And there's zero consideration for what, you know, other people's opinions. Oh, wow. Because looking at your particular perspective, we got a four of wands that goes up to a five of wands. And it's, you've noticed escalations 
Whether if you've been taking a step back and going into observational mode and or you've been speaking up and ready to you've been ready to stand up for yourself, even if this is just the conversation of no, things are changing. You are welcome to join me, but it sounds like you don't. So I want to wish you like, you know, better luck with you in the coming season, like whatever pleasantries <laughs> that some of you have been working with, but home is too chaotic for you. There, Like if we have a, the four of wands, and sometimes I notice if it's the, as opposed to the traditional marriage and commitment and foundation, I see it more like this like Burning Man center camp tent. Sometimes I do see this as that there's just been too many transient energies going through your home. It's sort of as though, it's it's as though like um, the house you have been residing in just takes in a lot of lost souls. And it may be confused with this idea of, oh, I'm trying to be nice to people, but it's as though accepting charity into your home has brought in toxic bullshit because charity, I, I, I hear the word charity case, and I, I do apologize for the term because I know for some that's a little, but I hear transient like people, like whether if it's they just come into the home at all times or it's a party house, um, like, you know, so like a fuck boy home kind of comes to mind a little bit of my sarcasm. But always having people in your home that have no direction. And for some, this has actually become a safety issue with children. That That's a very specific message that I think some of you, if you have been concerned about the safety of your own kids, some pets with some of these energies that have been wandering through your home, I'm being told your instincts are way more accurate than you're giving yourself credit for. There is a shift happening, and this is about looking at something from the opposite, mirroring, and as though focusing so much on yourself is giving you a chance to see things from a completely different angle. Um, for some of you, this is actually a work-related message of something about changing shift or um, blame shifting for some. That's interesting. That could mean a, a few different things, but there is a, a work career component that I am picking up from this card. Well, what the fuck could actually be going on? Let's get the higher perspective. Huh? Four of swords and the star. Like the star is in her shadow aspect. And I'm hearing like, you know, grasping at straws, grasping at your thoughts. Um, I'm getting many of you, you've been taking your own good advice and have been trying to find a little bit of this solo time. We did see that hermit a little bit earlier and just resting. Like I've canceled so many plans, like within the last six months, but you know, I've definitely canceled some of my plans in the last few days. It's just like, I don't want to go out. I don't want to feel okay about not wanting to go out. You know, it's this kind of energy of, I just want to nap. I just want to watch a little bit of TV. I want to work on just things that make me happy and rested. Like for some of you, you feel actually really debilitated right now. And for those who feel guilty that they have been resting a lot more than usual, um, I, there's a, some words and energy of comfort of, your body is broke. <laughs> it takes a long time to recover from heartache, to recover from abuse, to recover from confusing situations. Like I've talked quite a few times, like how, like, oh man, it's been like, what, five, six years since I left my ex-husband. And even though him and I were maybe married for about just shy of five years, I would say, still to this day, I am still trying to get them out of my energy, old habits, ways that I thought of myself, ways that um, I re um, arranged my life and my values just to appease this other person. And if you're still in the middle of this shift happening in your, what looks like to be a very chaotic home situation, um, don't beat yourself up because you're still in the middle of it and it's okay to give yourself permission to take a mental break. It is okay to do nothing. It is okay to meditate. Like that was the card that we saw earlier before we cut it away. But that meditation 
time is helping you really ground in and understand when other people are holding you back because of their jealousy. If you're still in that jealous energy, you won't see it quite as readily. And even if you think you see it, um, for some of you, you are still blinded by... <laughs> I was going to say blinded by, oh, a divine masculine. Oh, wow. Spirit just wanted to kind of throw somebody else underneath the bus. Okay. Um, what's the nice way? <laughs> mm, I'm actually being told to get a bit of a clarifier because this could go two or three different ways. Um, tell me about this divine masculine energy and how does it pertain to my... Hmm. My viewer. Oh, did you? It's so funny. Sometimes the cards, like, they <laughs> they flip and then they don't flip. Yeah, because there's something about looking for the right opportunity, the right place at the right time. But I also got, between that three of wands, I got a two of wands. And in some ways, this is, if the divine masculine energy from the higher perspective i'm going to get that with two of wands like this is like taking ownership of your situation being your own man being your own divine masculine doesn't matter if you subscribe to twin flames or not or if you you know see yourself as like a high priestess or a shamanic type there's something about you really learning how to anchor in your foundations because we do have a card of four of wands and then again the four of swords and that is foundational shifting, being able to create your own foundation on your own terms, not the terms that your religion taught you, not the terms that your parents taught you. For anyone who is going to be talking about cohabitating with parents, still having that, you know, healthy, thoughtful relationship with your folks so that you can still be your own independent adult, making your own independent decisions, and you're working with parental figures as peers and no longer with the old authority structure so that means going into the spiritual guidance oh six of cups eight of cups oh this is a reminder from earlier like there's been a lot going on like a lot um like i'm getting like you know f like throwing things around like you know smacking you know tables out of frustration like i i'm the queen of throwing stuff if i'm uh, like super pissed like you'll you'll get no judgment from me but it's sort of like how do i flail so much at this person it doesn't actually become um assault like that's a very dangerous place to be again you'll no, get no judgment from me but things have escalated so badly for a lot of you that the come to blows energy needs to be resolved because it doesn't matter it does not matter from this point forward if you have not resolved this original antagonistic energy and it has nothing to do with the person that you're involved with this is a habit this is an old habit because we do have six of cups for some of you this is a little bit of like old bullied energy whether if that um was bullying from a fellow kid or from an adult where they made you feel stupid for walking away they made you feel weak for walking away, a failure, less than, you just can't adult. There's so many things that we encode ourselves in as early as childhood as to what a success and a failure is supposed to be. And many of you have held on to these situations for as long as you have, partly for survival, partly because it is so difficult to move. Like nobody likes to actively go out of their way to move. It is a very rare thing where people say, oh, I get to move. Like the only people who get to say that are the ones like, I bought my first home, I get to move. Most other people when they say that is I have to move. So there's something about like letting go of like the old excuses as to why you chose to stay in the situation that you're in. Like you didn't have the energy. You didn't have the energy then, suddenly you have the energy now. There's some kind of great incentivization that has come through and it's helped you start dancing around, not skirting the issue, but being able to work with the energies even when they feel chaotic and childish. Because again, we got a few kids in this deck, like, you know, we've got this like, you know, this cute little kiddo barely understands how, you know, to work with a puppy. You know, we've got this like obstinate tween, like she's totally into the Backstreet Boys when I look at her this way. Then you got like, you know, the know-it-all, like I, I'm like, what was it? 
I, I don't know how you Americans talk. Uh, senior year, grade 12, something like that. So sort of like, you know, that kind of grade 12, senior year kind of like, I know what I'm doing. Like, you, you can't stop me. Like, there's a lot of different personalities that many of you have embodied and haven't interacted with. Any of you who are my soul tribe, you are all natural divine channelers. And most people, it's like, oh, I don't know how to divine channel. Do you know how to act? <laughs> Do you like looking at like comedians and actors and and poets and singers, do you like reverse engineering like the way that they do things from like within the soul to how their body expresses it? You're a divine channeler, even if you're just acting and you have been acting in all kinds of different energies. It's time to start sorting out those energies because those are actually a combination of guides, a few low vibing entities, as well as angels and trying to learn how to suss out everything in between. You've been in a trauma bond relationship. Can you just keep it as simple as that? Can you be kind enough to yourself to say, okay, I needed to work something out in my life. I had to take the long way in order to figure it out. But in the end, you are figuring it out and you'll still be able to have the win no matter how long it took you to get to this point. So you're being encouraged right now. Have a little gratitude for the journey. This is the two minute of silence. Like any of us who hail from um, like the Commonwealth, the Remembrance Day on November 11th, the 1111 portal as well, on the 11th day, on the 11th month, at the 11th hour, there's something we said about having two minutes of silence. You remember earlier that meditation card? If you're having a difficult time knowing how to cleanse, like, where do I start with my meditation? Your heart chakra is still opening and for any of us who've had trauma, a heart chakra opening can be physically painful, brings out tears, brings out anger, brings out our old, you know, our little uh, fighting, there's like a fighting Irish joke somewhere in there. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, you know, I'm hearing Uncle Mike here. It's a great Uncle Mike. He's coming here to say hello. <laughs> hey, Shane, but you should be proud of yourself. <laughs> He was also a former um, um, Mountie, and then his brother, who was my uh, grandfather, also were um, he served in World War II for the British Navy. There's something about just recognizing what your ancestors have gone through, recognizing what you have gone through. In the case of my pets, I, I have to recognize what I put, have put them through. Like, I technically got one of my dogs I got directly from the breeder and his sister I later adopted from another family. And I both jokingly say they are rescues, even though I've been their primary mom for most of their life. Like they've felt, felt the brunt of my anxiety, of my trauma, of me trying to figure my own shit out. Hell, in some ways me getting dogs is just my weird way of trying to learn how to overcome a dog bite <laughs> when I was a little kid, probably not too much older than here. You've had to go through a lot in order to truly understand why, because you're a bit of a fucking perfectionist. There's a piece of you that doesn't want to do this unless you know you're doing it for you, that you're doing the right thing because you know that the right thing is right for you. You probably gone your whole life trying to defend yourself and then you went for the other half of your life compromising yourself. Now you're just coming down to the middle. It's, you know, I keep talking about rehearsal is over curtain is being called and you're being brought to the stage and it's kind of cool even being in those energies taking that deep breath before you speak into a microphone and getting over that initial tense tensity when you first speak into a mic and you're unaccustomed to having your voice finally be heard to have your voice echo off the walls getting over a piece of your self that says, wow, do I actually sound like that? And even just starting off with a simple, hello, I want to introduce me. This is who I am. And knowing your voice is being heard, broadcasted, you have an audience that is whisper quiet in supreme anticipation because there is something that you need to speak into the world and there's a group of people that are ready to listen holy shit because we do have the empress with the king of wands here this is your final outcome 
this is really turning a lot of things on your head. Like there's been a huge shift in your reality, whether if that is a, a you know a shift change, a change of the guard, people moving out, others moving in, moving from one location to another, moving from one ideology into another. There's something about you becoming very receptive. Like this is so calm, this energy. Like I don't mind marinating in this just for a few minutes. It is going to be important. Keep yourself grounded. Keep working on those meditation practices. Keep cleansing. Your energy is being opened up to be washed. And it can be a little bit daunting every so often, but I'm getting a lot of this incoming Empress energy and this belongs to you. And you're being asked at this moment, can you satiate yourself first before satiating others? If you get a nice good hit of feeling good, can you just keep that shit to yourself? Could you just be greedy enough to just marinate in something that feels good just for a moment? You're not being selfish. The universe is infinite, but there's no point in being infinite if you don't fill up your tank first. You'll know when you're satiated for anyone who had that funny like little infinity, infinity joke in there. I'm listening. But there is a lovely chance for you to start taking care of yourself first. For those of you who receive like these downloads, these energetic waves of cleansing, these moments, and you feel tempted to share, here's the thing. Just don't bother yet. You don't need to right away. You're coming into your own King of Wands energy and the King of Wands knows what he wants. And if you don't know what you want, you're going to be magnetizing um, more people into your life that are trying to take from you. Because I see this from this ki another king that would recognize your value and try to, um, I'm hearing, hook up, pair up, work together for their own benefit, even though it feels like it could be mutual. There's something about you learning how to have better partnerships in your work and love life that it starts with you being 100% okay with yourself. You can share this later. And I know that because remember in the guidance, as we had this like moment of gratitude, like you have an audience, you haven't found them yet, but you need to let them find you, but you need to be approachable. As long as you're still in this energy of, because nobody likes to be begged to, like seriously, nobody goes down the street and has a homeless person ask them for money and they feel good about it. They either feel guilty or they feel, you know, their own gratitude wounding. Some of them resentful. Others, it's like, I didn't want to, but you know, why not? Sometimes gener being generous out of your heart, but the energy that you've been giving off up until this point actually looks more like this creepy person is going Rah. and nobody likes to be approached, especially you with their problems, being approached with needing money, being approached with needing emergency shelter again, being there to be everybody else's emotional punching bag and then them just assuming you should be ever so grateful because they are around. It's very egoic energy. It's very much this whole, I did it for you, but you know that they didn't. It's that sort of thing. So for now, be greedy. Take in all this good energy for yourself. You can give out of your abundance later. You're actually supposed to feel the energy and let it dissipate. The energy will come back again. That first wash of positive energy is supposed to be just for you. You're being encouraged and instructed to be receptive to any of these good positive energies and allow it to pass. Allow it to go away. You're supposed to let go of bad thoughts as well as the good thoughts. Right now you're being encouraged as you're learning to let go, let go of things that feel good in your body. Don't hold on to them. That's where addiction becomes the problem. And this is, oh, we got focus. I love this. This is very Sagittarian energy. And um, we did have the uh, Sagittarius moon reading from the other day. And there's something about looping back around to what's been going on for the last three to six months of your life. Where has your focus worked in your favor when you've focused on yourself and your own well-being? Does your energy feel like this or are you mirroring that? 
on the days you're not entirely certain as to what step to take next, because you are ready to go, like you're ready to get out the door with a bunch of ideas, you got a lot of good, like good um, theories going on, and you're very excited about it, even on the days when you're feeling a little bit exhausted about it. If you're not sure what you're attracting, who's around you? Those will be your clues. If you are attracting people that make you feel as though they are trying to grasp at your energy, whether it's that's for your attention, for your money, for your resources, for whatever that could be, just be aware that you might be in that energy as well and you're still a work in progress. Keep asking your angels and your guides to sh help them show you what this Empress energy is supposed to feel like and continue refining your focus. One day to the next, is there's not an answer, a single answer that will support you from one day to the next. Each day is a unique decision that you need to make of what are you being receptive to and if you are receiving things that make you feel uncomfortable to re-pivot your focus not to go what's wrong with me but to ask yourself what part of me is having a difficult time accepting the good and filtering and allowing the bad to flow past me wow so i'm going to give a shuffle the rainbow oracle which i like you know before i go to shuffle we do the card of confidence and isolation and i think i saw yeah consciousness underneath there like for for those of us who've, who've cried in the middle of the night going why do i have to do this alone why does it feel as though it's just supposed to be me and You have asked for help and spirit has given it to you. And it means that if you feel alone, even though you've asked for help, that's actually the universe giving you a gift of space because you don't know what you want. And it's really important to ask yourself, what do you actually want? Because many of you are digesting through some really old pain. This isn't over. But I'm hearing the hard part is over. You've recognized the problem, and that's 90% of our issue. Our blind spots are not our, our inability to read and register pain, because sometimes it's right in front of us. And these are the ghost pains. This is that persistent pain. That is that fear coming back up, that walking away from something makes you this, or giving up makes you that have gratitude for this journey because you asked to understand something and you're understanding with perfect beautiful clarity like for those of you who feel like you've wasted a lot of time consider that you've had to go back to school a little bit but you can now graduate feeling better that this time you've got you've improved it's not that you get it right it just means that you've improved you've gotten it better and that's going to be the key to your happiness it's you, you alone. You get to decide if you feel happy and you get to decide if you want to receive other people's energies. Do they make you happy? Do they not? Because at the end of the day, your entire journey has been nothing more than an opportunity to allow you to grow, to allow you to change, to give you a chance to purge some old, old belief systems and create a new generation for your own benefit, for society's benefit, and also for the benefit of your family. Just take that two minutes, sit in your energies, be thankful that you're figuring it out. I think that's the message. Oof. Wow. Well, whoever you are, damn, I really hope that this helped. 
Well, thanks again for sticking around. If you like my style, please feel free. Like, share, and subscribe. And excited to have more and more of you along for this amazing journey. And if this didn't resonate with you, totally cool. Don't worry about it. You're welcome to go to the search bar up here. And, you know, you're always welcome to look up, I don't know, for, for, all, for all of you who are unfamiliar, go check out the Remembrance Day traditions or the, the symbolism of the poppy. There's a lovely little song that I once sang in choir about, you know, being in remembrance and all that fun shit or whatever it is you're technically into. Good luck, everybody. Bye.